Another computer art tutorial coming at you. This time we are focusing on the principle of design contrast. And so the effect we're going to create in this Pixlr tutorial is uh, trying to create a uh, add effect to a photo where it looks like it's kind of torn in half and half of it is like a photocopy or like a paper image like sketch and the other half is a the actual image and so we'll do a little bit with um, you know layer masking and layer transparency overlaying and have a few layers going on an image to create this effect so let's go ahead and jump in and start our own so I'll go ahead and toggle home we're using Pixlr E I'm going to go ahead and create new and then we'll want to choose full HD option and we'll call this uh, project contrast and hit create. So I've already done some searching to bring up images. I found another image of uh, the subject that I used in this project and that's a, a legendary musician that passed away uh, earlier last week and so I thought I'd go with Eddie Van Halen for this project um, in memoriam of like I said, legendary musician. So I'm um, going to paste my image in here. Uh, it looks kind of small, but I think actually for this particular project, it might work out okay stretching, even if it gets a little pixelated, just because of the effect that we're sort of applying to this photo and almost making it appear old in a way. Um, so that kind of works out okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and resize that as usual to fit uh, my space and then crop the edges off. So my workspace and my image uh, match up here. Cool. And then hit apply. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, we're actually going to duplicate this image layer. And so if we hit three buttons on the side here, um, we can go down to duplicate layers, this button right in here. So uh, the top layer, what we're going to want to do is turn this one black and white. So the one below will be color one on top will be black and white. So let's go ahead and go to adjustment. Uh, we'll go to hue saturation and we're just going to turn the saturation to zero. Um, if you feel like you want to mess with lightness or darkness at all, you could mess with that a little bit. You know, if your image seems really dark, once you do that, turn down the saturation. Maybe you want to turn it a little lower. You know, maybe if it's too bright, once you turn the sound down the saturation, maybe you want to make it a little lighter. So find the right level for your image and then we'll hit apply. Okay. So um, next thing we're going to do is we want to create a mask so that we can still see the colored layer underneath this black and white layer. Um, it does seem a little bit funny that it doesn't show it black and white in the preview box here, but um, that's okay. So we want to have this top layer selected to do the masking too. And so we're going to actually take our um, cutout mask tool and we will choose the first one, shape mask. And the mode should be uh, remove, and sh our shape should be a rectangle, right? And so, and feather should be zero. That probably should be defaulted. So I'm just going to take my um, my image here, and I'm going to go over it like half the image, the half that I want to become color. So when I let go of that, um, you can see that half of the image shows the color layer and half is still black and white. Oh, you can actually see it in the preview box now. I'm going to hit Command Z because I didn't quite like that. Um, I wasn't quite centered down the middle of the face. I would want it to be a little more centered halfway down the middle. And that seems pretty good. Maybe I could even do it one more time, just a little bit more for this way. All right, that seems pretty good for balance of black and white in color. Um, your image may have the person more in the center or maybe you aren't even doing this with an image of a person. You could do it with really any image that you want to do. So uh, top layer though is black and white and that's masked and the bottom layer is the full um, color image. So next thing we need to do here is bring in a paper tear. So quick Google uh, image search for paper tear. Uh, should bring up some results. Um, this one I think is going to work well for me. Uh, there will be lots of choices as far as tears go. I think that finding one like this uh, where it's just got an image of paper, one slice, not two different slices, um, is going to be easiest to use for this effect that we're going for. So I'm going to copy this image here and go back to Pixlr and then Command V to paste this in. Um, I'm going to do some resizing here, bring the image size up, just stretch this out so I can see what I'm working with. 
And I'm going to take my magic wand tool and turn the tolerance way down because I'm trying to select this white area out here and have it not jump into the paper area in here. So that means I need this tolerance to be like almost zero or maybe zero or one or something like that. Um, Command D, I'm going to turn this maybe just up a little bit like five, something really low. All right, that looks like it did a pretty good selection. So really low um, tolerance on that. Make sure that your selection area that the wand selects is really small. Um, and then I'm just going to hit delete to kind of clear that out so I have um, just the torn paper edge to work with here. So the way I want to rotate this now is maybe I'll just do an edit, um, transform, and rotate counterclockwise to turn this so my tear is on the side going towards the color side. All right, so that's kind of a key thing here is we want to make sure that the tear, this tear edge is pointing at your colored side, right? Not pointing at your black and white side. Okay, so um, then I'm just kind of overlapping this um, tear right along the middle here. Maybe even we want to turn down the opacity just to kind of like watch where we're going with that. So I want to make sure that it's still, it, the tear covers all of the black and white part. All right, and then we're going to adjust our mask a little bit um, to account for that. So, and then blend them together. So um, let's see. So what I want to do here next is actually change the layer style of this to blend them with. Um, and so I believe what we want to choose is multiply or it might be overlay. It could be screen though too. <laughs> I actually think it is screen. I knew it was one of these first three. Oh no, maybe, you know what? I have to double check on my other project here. Let's double check. Always a good idea to double check. Oh no, blend mode. No blend mode has been selected for this one. Okay, I left the transparency up. Oh, I see, right, I just put it underneath that layer. Right, my bad. All right, so if we drag the paper layer underneath and in between our two, our black and white and our color image, that's right, that's what we're gonna do is just, um, we'll take our mask, our cutout mask tool, and we're gonna switch it to draw mask, make sure it's on remove, um, make sure your size will fit inside this little paper tear slice here. So I might turn up the size just a little bit, maybe 40. Click out here to check the size. All right, I want to go even bigger than that. All right, that should work. Let's close this. And so what I want to do now is just make sure that your, um, your black and white layer is selected. I'm um, actually, what I should be on is add to mask. I want to add to the mask. I need to add the black and white part back in here right up to the edge of the paper tear. So I don't want to cover the paper tear entirely. I want to see that little white edge of the paper tear, but I'm just revealing some more. You can see the black and white now goes right up to the edge of the paper tear. That is really what we want to try and have the effect look like. Um, to get the effect we want for this image. So that's looking pretty good. Um, last couple of tweaks we're gonna make, we're gonna change maybe this layer style a little bit to give a different look here and maybe even blend um, you know, an image, uh, a paper texture image over this to kind of blend those together. So if we search for paper texture, again, just quick Google image search, um, we can find one here. I can copy this image bring it into Pixlr and hit Command V to paste it. There we go. And now I'm going to just take this image. Oh, it's a very large image. Uh, and I'm going to shrink it way down and bring it back over here. Now I only really want it covering the black and white portion of this. So I'm going to put it right about there. And then uh, just go ahead and change the layer style to one of these here. Yeah, multiply works pretty good. You could just barely see it through. So let's see, maybe overlay. Yeah, overlay kind of like 
doesn't quite do it, but multiply, you just have that little hint of paper texture in there, which is kind of a nice thing to get. Uh, the other thing I did play with in my other one that maybe you want to play with, but you don't have to, is doing a um, posterize effect. So if you go to adjustment, go to posterize, um, you can choose to make this image a little more sort of like photocopy-like, which can be a nice effect, I think, in this project. But, um, but you, again, you don't have to. The fewer number of colors you get, the more photocopy-like it looks. But I think, you know, settling on something like three or four, you know, is kind of a nice look for this project. But again, that's kind of a, an after thing. You don't necessarily have to add that. You know, if you kind of like just the black and white against the color um, without the posterizing, don't necessarily have to do that. So um, that's pretty much it for this project though. Creating contrast in an image by kind of making it look like it's torn paper against a photograph. So there we go. This is done and I uh, hope you guys have luck and fun creating your own contrasty paper torn image in Pixlr.